fun. They're so, fantastic. So, speaking of awkward and cringy, what the fuck is going on with your country, man? Well, um, I'm so happy for the first <laughs> time. No, I've never, I mean, you know, Michelle Obama said something terrible. She's like, I was proud of my country the first for the first time or something like that, you know, about something trivial and ridiculous, which I found distressing. And I don't want to say that because it's not true. But I did suddenly think there might be hope for Europe after all. There might be hope particularly for the best country in Europe, which is England, uh, and the best sort of nation in Europe, the, you know, the United Kingdom. Finally, unshackled from this hellish... Um, this hellish continent on a, a suicide mission into Islamization and uh, economic doom. Finally, the UK has got a chance to prove that it's better than all that. And it can reopen, you know, better trade relationships with Asia, with India, with America. It can, re you know, reassess, renegotiate its relationship with all the countries around it. The European project, for me, I mean, I know a lot of Americans have sort of believed what they've read about the coverage, you know, from, from the media on this. But uh, I'm definitely in the Brexit camp. I think it's fantastic. And not just economically. Um, because I think things will bounce back and, and Britain will be better than ever. But, but culturally, that's what's, what's, what's so essential. Britain has a slightly different national character as the rest of Europe. It's never really fit. And I think Britain now has an opportunity to save itself from the suicidal open borders policies of Angela Merkel, from the inevitable decline and fall of Europe as a continent generally. Uh, Britain's got a chance now, and it didn't have a chance as part of Europe. And Merkel is the one who, when those attacks were going on in Germany during uh, New Year's Eve, where mm -hmm. the Islamic guys were grabbing all those girls, her mm -hmm. advice was for them to dress differently well, and stay within arm's length. I mean, in feminism, we call this victim blaming. Yes, when you exactly. tell people that they did something that contributed toward their rape. Uh, but of course, in the hierarchy of oppression and victimhood, according to progressives, um, Muslims rank higher than women. Muslims rank higher than anybody else, in fact. Nobody knows why. Well, it's because uh, of the wars. Well, it's currently, because, right? No, it's because they hate the West as much as feminists do. And but don't you think it has something to do with the fact that we invaded Iraq and Afghanistan and people feel a little bit guilty about the fact that a million people have died? Well, white guilt has driven all of the worst things that have happened in all Western... Oh, all of them. All the worst things that have happened in Western culture in the last 30 years have all been driven by white guilt. Feminism, Black Lives Matter, the whole lot. Uh, you know, th these are not good reasons. Feminism Feeling is driven by white guilt? Of course. Look, I've got a theory about this. It's okay. very straightforward. In the 90s, we had Marilyn Manson, we had Trent Reznor, we had a Nirvana, and people were cutting themselves. You know, there was, a, there was a, the emo thing. When I was growing up, I mean, I didn't, obviously, but when people were growing up, they had an outlet for all of that sort of repressed rage and self-loathing. Well, kids these days don't have that. And the inevitable result was social justice. What they do instead is they sort of hang on to this. It's a protracted self-hatred. It's protracted self-harm, social justice. They go out into the world and hurt people who look like them. So these awful, you know, middle-class white feminists women just want to hurt other middle class white people because they feel like you know the world is terrible uh you know it's it's a very weird phenomenon this social justice thing and i think it's mainly driven by self-loathing and um once you understand that their behavior becomes a lot more it makes a lot more sense you know you start to understand why they are as they are well i think a lot of hate is definitely based in self-loathing and it, yeah. it, there's there's an opportunity today that they have that they never had before to organize and find like-minded folks and get together and form other crazy people. Bully gangs. Yes, they are yeah. bully gangs. They're, they're bully gangs. And, you know, you, when you start to understand that this is a sort of psychosis, when you start to understand this is a sort of, like, mental illness, this is something that they should have got out of their systems when they were teens, but they didn't because they had no culture to help them. You know, I grew up on Marilyn Manson and, and, and Nirvana. These kids grew up on, like, Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber and that sort of, like, flat anodyne eternal funless grinning garbage they don't ever get it out of their systems and now you have 35 year old bitter <laughs> bastards working for BuzzFeed who still it's got to go somewhere and where does it go it goes into social justice and this is what's happened don't you think that there's a percentage of them some of them that, that genuinely feel like this is a unique opportunity to right some of the wrongs that our culture is sort of encouraged what is Whether our it's culture racism encouraged? or oh, there's there's oh, legitimate sexism, on, there's legitimate on. racism, Look, right? Nobody says there's no sexism and no right. racism in okay. this in this country. Even Agreed. even in this country, no serious person says right. that. Nobody really believes that. I'm squeaking on my chair. That wasn't anything else. Um, <laughs> Nobody really believes right. that, nobody and believes nobody that. says it. Right. Look, we live in, you know, well, you live, I hope to live here one day, but, uh, you know, you live in the greatest country in the world. It is a country driven by democracy, freedom, property rights, capitalism, and all of those Western values, the values on which, you know, freedom of speech and, and the Second Amendment too, all of those things that went into building America and making America wonderful are exactly the same things that are responsible for women 
having the vote, having access to the same oppo- the same opportunities, same access to institutions, to education, right. to the workplace, having equal pay, which of course they do. You know, it, it, giving gay people rights. Look at the places in the world where gay people have rights. They are modern, Western, liberal, cap- capitalist democracies. Well, the left hates all of those things and hates the West for precisely the you know for precisely the reasons that the West has been nice to them. You know. And frankly, they don't go after this cis het white patriarchy. Well, the patriarchy, you know, the Western capitalist patriarchy is the only people that like you, the only people who like the gays, the only people who like, you know, blacks and women, all the rest of it. Go anywhere else in the world, and it is not a particularly p- pretty situation, not a particularly happy place to be if you're not born into the right group. If you're in America, you can pretty much do, say, and be whatever you want. Now, there are threats to that, and I, my college tour is. is hoping to sort of head off some of those those threats brewing in American universities. But these, what are these people really hating on? They live in the best country, the most equal country, the greatest country, the country with the most liberal values anywhere on the planet. And they're still not happy. Well, fine. That's okay. There are obviously things left to fix. No one's saying there's no sexism and no racism. But why are they so silent when they see these horrific things happen elsewhere in the world? And when um, left-wing politicians decide they want to bring those horrific things into our countries. You know, Justin Trudeau wants to bring all of these, you know, Syrian, um, they're not refugees, of course, they're migrants. You know, Angela Merkel in Germany, as we were talking about a moment ago, she, you know, opened the borders. Are there 2 million Sir- Syrians in Germany? Nobody really knows. We know it's at least 1.2, 1.4 million fundamentally altering the fabric of germany and importing with it bringing in with it did we have a crash are we still recording audio okay what happens we just got to reboot so if you're watching this on youtube you're not watching this (laughs) <laughs> but, uh, you're not seeing anything. You're this not is seeing the anything. government, man. People are right now. Do you know what it is? Because we, minded folks cause we said feminism and Islam and Merkel all together. They came in. And European they, Union. They, they came in. Yeah, they, they know, sent, and European Union. They, they sent, sent a bomb through the pipes. We've got. We've got the the Stuxnet is in is in here. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't <laughs> think anybody is saying that there's no racism, and no one's saying there's no sexism. We we agree on that. But don't you think that the the, the sum that there is should be combated in some sort of a way? Well, sure, but that right. takes that takes care of itself pretty much. I mean, look, when was, the, when was the last time somebody said a, like a genuinely sexist or a genuinely racist remark in a friend group you were out and say in the bar with and didn't get corrected by people? Well, you with know? my friends, it would all be joking, but a lot well, of, of course it's would joking with everybody. I mean, how many how many white supremacists do you really think are in America compared to black supremacists? How many genuinely misogynistic women woman hating men do you think there are in America compared to the women the young women that? Think third wave feminism has bred well the third wave feminism though is organized whereas the misogynist men most of the time they're isolated living in cabins in the woods and shit we have to speculate because we never meet any because we don't know any i don't know any i've never met one but i've met plenty <coughs> of man-hating lesbianic monsters who would be perfectly happy to see men rounded up in camps i've never met a real misogynist and oh, i learn- and i try and i try i try mm, but i they- mean wouldn't they be my fans if they existed i mean you know i'm always being a accused of providing cover for these people but i've never found any well that doesn't mean they're not there i mean you're dealing with a you giant number of people hard. but what about the rapists you what about the work. people that murder women i mean the, those are real people the, uh, well the rape rates in this country have been going down for 30 years they have been going um, down and that's God, wonderful right, right? And, it's, but, and it's fantastic but, but they still get well, they course, still was, happen yeah, but you're never going to get rid of that right, right. Never? that is some no no, you cannot like language police your way out of bigotry. No one's saying cannot, language police. You don't cannot, you think culturally we've evolved past where we were a thousand years ago? We all agree on that, right? Uh, sure, but you're, never, you think you're never going to eradicate rape. That's no, not going to never. happen. No, no, really? Of course not. That's insane. Well, one th- once we get to the point where we could read each other's minds, we have some sort of uh, embedded silicone chip that God, allows how us awful. to... How Can you imagine anything worse than that? It's going to happen. Imagine anything worse than that? Don't you think we're kind of halfway there? read each other's minds? I don't even know how to read my own mind. My God. Don't awful. you think we're kind of on the way there? No. I no, and not. actually, it's it's actually, you know, look, this this masculine energy, you know, that... that Everybody in this room has inside. Uh, them. Like when you say that with your hands open, like a jazz dancer, your blonde, this bleached hair, energy. with this, <laughs> this tailored army jacket, this masculine energy cannot be contained. Listen, Joe, this masculine energy <laughs> is like just waiting to bust out. Okay, <laughs> it's an explosion. It can't be contained. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Um, <laughs> I'll try that again. This masculine this, energy. This, maybe you could coach me through it. Okay. okay I'm f- <clears throat> it's so hard, but you've got like this. sparkly dog tags on. <laughs> done. When, I'm when you done. shut yourself, I had they clanked. Such an- they clanked. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry. I had such a nice time last time. Is uh, having a nice time this time? <laughs> we are having a lovely time. Uh, okay.